Hello and welcome to How to Be a Professional Magician, here to help you move from hobbyist magician to full-time professional and to teach you how you can earn money from your magic with me, Robert Bone. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at what do you need on your business card? So it's very likely you already have a business card and you're going to need to have something on there. So what do you put on? Well, first of all, instead of looking at what to put on, let's first look at what you don't need. It is very easy for business cards to get cluttered. They are quite small and it's tempting to put on as much information as possible so people know what you do, what events you work at, how they can book you, testimonials and everything else in between. The things that you don't really need are a list of events. I've seen it before in business cards when people have a list of weddings, parties, Christmas, corporate events, trade shows, exhibitions, christenings, you name it, it's on the list. I've seen people have testimonials and reviews. That's great, but remember, if people have seen you at an event, they know who you are, they know what you do, and they know what sort of events you work at, the chances are you've had a brief discussion with them or they've already got an event in mind for you to give them a business card or for them to ask you for one. Other things you don't really need are your postal address and also when it comes to job title, you don't need things like director or CEO. This is a business card for a magician, not a corporate. You don't really need to have those sort of things on there. Of course, you need to make sure your business cards are good quality. They should be on good stock, thick card, not flimsy, and try to avoid free and cheap business cards, which can be quite bendy. If you get a business card which is on good quality, solid stock, it's not going to bend so much, it's not going to fold, but it is going to have more of an air of quality about it. And make sure you have a good finish on there as well, that they are printed well and professionally. Don't just try to run them off your printer at home and cut them with some scissors, even with a guillotine, that won't come across at all. And if anything, that will be doing a disservice to you. Make sure, though, that any information on that is in your brand. So if you have colours and fonts that you use, those should be the colours and fonts used on your business cards. Sometimes when you're using an online creation tool, there are only limited fonts and you have to pay extra money to upload your own graphics. And you might think you'll save a little bit of money by using the fonts provided or the artwork or the templates provided. The thing is, that might save you a little bit of money now, but by not keeping with your brand, that could cost you and not look as professional as you would like. The information that you really need to have on that are, of course, your name and performing name, your job title. So now we are talking magician or mind reader, or if you can come up with something unique and put that on there, or a tagline or a slogan. Make sure you have your website address, your email address, and your phone number, and maybe some social media, but only if you really use that. There's no point linking onto your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Instagram, if you don't really use those. And I find useful to have a photo on, not to be vain, not a performing photo, but a headshot, because if people see you, they will link to your face. And if they see you again, or they're looking around again, and they find your business card, and I have had it before, on two occasions, I have had bookings for people who have had my business card in their possession for seven to eight years and they've looked through seen my face and they've got oh that was the guy I recognize him so sometimes having your photo on that is good especially if you're going to maybe wedding fairs as well where people can be shopping around and over a couple of weekends go to a couple of wedding fairs and actually potentially see six seven different magicians trying to remember them just by name will make you it hard for them but make it easier for them to remember you
So make sure your business cards are good quality, professionally printed, professionally designed, that they have your branding, they have your colors, they have the essential contact information. They already know who you are and what you do and what sort of events they could book you at. In fact, they may even have something in mind for you. They just really need to have the website details so they can see a little bit more just to confirm and the contact details so they can get in touch and book you for their event. If you have any questions about building your magic business, please drop me an email. It's robert at howtobeaprofessionalmagician.com and make sure you head over to howtobeaprofessionalmagician.com for resources and courses to help you make money by performing magic. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you can get more weekly bite-sized business lessons coming direct to you. I'm Robert and thanks for listening to How to Be a Professional Magician.